sisters, we welcome you to the temple and hope you will find joy in serving in the house of the Lord this day. Those of you who are here to receive your own endowment should have been washed, anointed, and clothed in the garment of the holy priesthood. For those who are representing deceased persons, the ordinances of washing, anointing, and clothing in the garment of the holy priesthood, together with the ordaining on behalf of deceased brethren, were performed previously. Each of you should have received a new name in connection with this company. If any of you have forgotten the new name or have not received these ordinances as explained, please stand. Please be alert, attentive, and reverent during the presentation of the endowment. As you are asked to proceed to the veil, please do so in an orderly manner, row by row, as directed. After passing through the veil into the celestial room and in other areas in the temple, if you need to communicate, please whisper, thus helping us maintain the quiet reverence that should prevail in the house of the Lord. We will now proceed with the presentation of the endowment. Brethren, you have been washed and pronounced clean, or that through your faithfulness you may become clean from the blood and sins of this generation. You have been anointed to become hereafter kings and priests unto the Most High God, to rule and reign in the house of Israel forever. Sisters, you have been washed and anointed to become hereafter queens and priestesses to your husbands. Brethren and sisters, if you are true and faithful, the day will come when you will be chosen, called up and anointed kings and queens, priests and priestesses, whereas you are now anointed only to become such. The realization of these blessings depends upon your faithfulness. You have had a garment placed upon you, which, you were informed, represents the garment given to Adam and Eve when they were found naked in the Garden of Eden, and which is called the garment of the Holy Priesthood. This you were instructed to wear throughout your life you were informed that it will be a shield and a protection to you, inasmuch as you do not defile it, and if you are true and faithful to your covenants. You have had a new name given unto you, which you were told never to divulge nor forget. This new name is a key word, which you will be required to give at a certain place in the temple today. Your endowment is to receive all those ordinances in the house of the Lord which are necessary for you, to enable you to walk back to the presence of the Father, passing the angels who stand as sentinels, being enabled to give them the key words, the signs, and tokens pertaining to the holy priesthood, and gain your eternal exaltation. If you proceed and receive your full endowment, you will be required to take upon yourselves sacred obligations, the violation of which will bring upon you the judgment of God, for God will not be mocked. If any of you desire to withdraw rather than accept these obligations of your own free will and choice, you may now make it known by raising your hand. Brethren and sisters, as you sit here you will hear the voices of three persons who represent Elohim, Jehovah, and Michael. Elohim will command Jehovah and Michael to go down and organize a world. The work of the six creative periods will be represented. They will also organize man in their own likeness and image, male and female. Jehovah, Michael, see yonder is matter unorganized. Go ye down and organize it into a world like unto the other worlds that we have heretofore formed. Call your laborers the first day and bring me word. It shall be done, Elohim. Come, Michael, let us go down. We will go down, Jehovah. Michael, see, here is matter unorganized. We will organize it into a world like unto the other worlds that we have heretofore formed. We will call our labors the first day and return and report. We will return and report our labors of the first day, Jehovah. Elohim, we have done as thou hast commanded and have called our labors the first day. It is well. Jehovah, 
Michael, go down again. Gather the waters together and cause the dry land to appear. The great waters call ye seas, and the dry land call ye earth. Form mountains and hills, great rivers and small streams, to beautify and give variety to the face of the earth. Call your labors in the second day, and bring me word. It shall be done, Elohim. Come, Michael, let us go down. We will go down, Jehovah. together and cause the dry land to appear. The great waters we will call seas, and the dry land we will call earth. We will form mountains and hills, great rivers and small streams to beautify and give variety to the face of the earth. We will call our labors the second day and return and report. We will return and report our labors of the second day, Jehovah. Elohim, we have done as thou hast commanded, and have called our labors the second day. It is well. Jehovah, Michael, return again to the earth that you have organized. Divide the light from the darkness. Call the light day and the darkness night. Cause the lights in the firmament to appear the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Cause the stars also to appear and give light to the earth, the same as with other worlds heretofore created. Call your labors the third day and bring me word. It shall be done, Elohim. Come, Michael, let us return again to the earth that we have organized. We will return, Jehovah. Michael, we will divide the light from the darkness and call the light day and the darkness night. We will cause the lights in the firmament to appear, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. We will cause the stars also to appear and give light to the earth, the same as with other worlds heretofore created. We will call our labors the third day and return and report. We will return and report our labors of the third day, Jehovah. Elohim, we have done as thou hast commanded, and have called our labors the third day. It is well. Jehovah, Michael, return and place seeds of all kinds in the earth, that they may spring forth as grass, flowers, shrubbery, trees, and all manner of vegetation each bearing seed in itself after its own kind. Call your labors the fourth day and bring me word. It shall be done, Elohim. Come, Michael, let us go down. We will go down, Jehovah. Michael, we will place seeds of all kinds in the earth that they may spring forth as grass, flowers, shrubbery, trees, and all manner of vegetation. We will call our labors the fourth day and return and report. We will return and report our labors of the fourth day, Jehovah. Return and place all manner of life upon the earth. Command the beasts, the fowls, the fishes, the insects, all creeping things and other forms of animal life to multiply in their respective elements, each after its kind. and every kind of vegetation to multiply in its sphere. 
that every form of life may fill the measure of its creation and have joy therein. Call your labors the fifth day, and bring me word. It shall be done, Elohim. Come, Michael, let us go down. We will go down, Jehovah. Michael, now that the earth is formed, divided, and beautified, and vegetation is growing thereon, we will place beasts upon the land. The elephant, the lion, the tiger, the bear, the horse, and all other kinds of animals. Fowls in the air in all their varieties. Fishes of all kinds in the waters. And insects and all manner of animal life upon the earth. We will command the beasts, the fowls, the fishes, the insects, all creeping things and other forms of animal life to multiply in their respective elements, each after its kind and every kind of vegetation to multiply in its sphere. That every form of life may feel the measure of its creation and have joy therein. <coughs> we will call our labors the fifth day and return and report. It is well, Jehovah. Now that the earth is formed with vegetation growing thereon, and provided with all manner of life. It is glorious and beautiful. It is, Michael. Let us return and report our labors of the fifth day, Jehovah. done as thou hast commanded, and have called our labors the fifth day. It is well. Jehovah, Michael, is man found on the earth? Man is not found on the earth, Elohim. Jehovah, Michael, then let us go down and form man in our own likeness and in our own image, male and female, and put into them their spirits and let us give them dominion over all things on the face of the earth. We will plant for them a garden eastward in Eden, and place them in it to tend and cultivate it, that they may be happy and have joy therein. We will command them to multiply and replenish the earth, that they may have joy in their posterity. We will place before them the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and we will allow Lucifer, our common enemy whom we have thrust out, to tempt them and to try them, that they may know by their own experience the good from the evil. If they yield to temptation, we will give unto them the law of sacrifice, and we will provide a savior for them as we counseled in the beginning, that they may be brought forth by the power of the redemption and the resurrection and come again into our presence, and with us partake of eternal life and exaltation. We will call this the sixth day, and we will rest from our labors for a season. Come, let us go down. We will go down, Elohim. Jehovah, see the earth that we have formed. There is no man to till and take care of it. We are here to form man in our own likeness and in our own image. We will do so, Elohim. Jehovah, man is now organized 
and we will put into him his spirit, the breath of life, that he may become a living soul. Jehovah, is it good for man to be alone? It is not good for man to be alone, Elohim. We will cause the deep sleep to come upon this man whom we have formed, and we will take from his side a rib, from which we will form a woman, to be a companion and helpmate for him. Brethren and sisters, this is Michael who helped form the earth. When he awakens from the sleep which Elohim and Jehovah have caused to come upon him, he will be known as Adam, and having forgotten all, will have become like a little child. Brethren, close your eyes as if you were asleep. Adam, awake and arise. All the brethren will please arise. Adam, here is a woman whom we have formed, and whom we give unto you to be a companion and help me for you. What will you call her? Eve. Why will you call her Eve? Because she is the mother of all living. That is right, Adam. Because she is the mother of all living. We have organized for you this earth and have planted a garden eastward in Eden. We will place you in the garden and will there command you to multiply and replenish the earth that you may have joy and rejoicing in your posterity. Jehovah, introduce Adam and Eve into the garden which we have prepared for them. It shall be done, Elohim. We now go with Adam and Eve into the garden. The brethren will please be seated. Adam, Eve, we have created this earth and have placed upon it all kinds of vegetation and animal life. We have commanded all these to multiply in their own sphere and element. We give you dominion over all these things and make you, Adam, Lord over the whole earth and all things on the face thereof. We now command you to multiply and replenish the earth, that you may have joy and rejoicing in your posterity. We have also planted for you this garden, wherein we have placed all manner of fruits, flowers, and vegetation. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. Nevertheless, thou mayest choose for thyself, for it is given unto thee. But remember that I forbid it, for in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Remember these commandments which we have given unto you. Now, go to, dress this garden, take good care of it, be happy, and have joy therein. We shall go away, but we shall visit you again and give you further instructions. here. A new world? Yes, a new world. Patterned after the old one where we used to live. I know nothing about any other world. Oh, I see. Your eyes are not yet open. You have forgotten everything. You must eat some of the fruit of that tree. Adam, here is some of the fruit of this tree. It will make you wise. I will not partake of that fruit. Father told me that in the day I should partake of it, I should surely die. You shall not surely die, but shall be as the gods, knowing good and evil. I will not partake of it. Oh, you will not. Well, we shall see. Here is 
some of the fruit of that tree. It will make you wise. It is delicious to the taste and very desirable. Who are you? I am your brother. You, my brother? And come here to persuade me to disobey father? I have said nothing about father. I want you to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that your eyes may be opened. For that is the way father gained his knowledge. You must eat of this fruit so as to comprehend that everything has its opposite. Good and evil. Virtue and vice. Light and darkness. Health and sickness. Pleasure and pain. Thus your eyes will be opened. And you will have knowledge. Is there no other way? There is no other way. Then I will partake. some of the fruit of that tree. It is delicious to the taste and very desirable. Eve, do you know what fruit that is? Yes. It is the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I cannot partake of it. Do you not know that Father commanded us not to partake of the fruit of that tree? Do you intend to obey all of Father's commandments? Yes, all of them. Do you not remember that Father commanded us to multiply and replenish the earth? I have partaken of this fruit and by so doing shall be cast out, and you will be left a lone man in the Garden of Eden. Eve, I see that this must be. I will partake that man may be. That is right. It is better for us to pass through sorrow that we may know the good from the evil. I know thee now. Thou art Lucifer, he who is cast out of Father's presence for rebellion. Yes. You are beginning to see already. What is that apron you have on? It is an emblem of my power and priesthoods. I am looking for Father to come down to give us further instructions. Oh, you are looking for Father to come down, are you? Jehovah, we promised Adam and Eve that we would visit them and give them further instructions. Come, let us go down. We will go down, Elohim. I hear their voices. They are coming. See, you are naked. Take some fig leaves and make you aprons. Father will see your nakedness. Quick, hide. Come, let us hide. <coughs> Brethren and sisters, put on your aprons. I heard thy voice and hid myself because I was naked. Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou partaken of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil of which we commanded thee not to partake? The woman thou gavest me and commanded that she should remain with me, she gave me of the fruit of the tree and I did eat. Eve, what is this thou hast done? The serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Lucifer, What hast thou been doing here? I have been doing that which has been done in other worlds. What is that? I have been giving some of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil to them. Lucifer, because thou hast done this, thou shalt be cursed above all the beasts of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. If thou cursest me for doing the same thing which has been done in other worlds, 
I will take the spirits that follow me, and they shall possess the bodies thou createst for Adam and Eve. I will place enmity between thee and the seed of the woman. Thou mayest have power to bruise his heel, but he shall have power to crush thy head. Then with that enmity, I will take the treasures of the earth, and with gold and silver I will buy up armies and navies, false priests who oppress, and tyrants who destroy, and reign with blood and horror on this earth. Depart. Jehovah, let cherubim and a flaming sword be placed to guard the way of the tree of life, lest Adam and Eve put forth their hands and partake of the fruit thereof and live forever in their sins. It shall be done, Elohim. Let cherubim and a flaming sword be placed to guard the way of the tree of life, lest Adam and Eve put forth their hands and partake of the fruit thereof and live forever in their sins. It is done, Elohim. Adam, because thou hast partaken of the forbidden fruit, the earth shall be cursed for thy sake. Instead of producing fruits and flowers spontaneously, it shall bring forth thorns, thistles, briars, and noxious weeds to afflict and torment man. And by the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat thy bread all the days of thy life. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Inasmuch as Eve was the first to eat of the forbidden fruit, if she will covenant that from this time forth she will obey the law of the Lord, and will hearken unto your counsel as you hearken unto mine, and if you will covenant that from this time forth you will obey the law of Elohim, we will give unto you the law of obedience and sacrifice, and we will provide a Savior for you, whereby you may come back into our presence, and with us partake of eternal life and exaltation. Adam, I now covenant to obey the law of the Lord, and to hearken to your counsel as you hearken unto Father. Elohim, I now covenant with thee, that from this time forth I will obey thy law and keep thy commandments. It is well. Jehovah, inasmuch as Adam and Eve have discovered their nakedness, make coats of skins as a covering for them. It shall be done, Elohim. Brethren and sisters, the garment which was placed upon you in the washing room is to cover your nakedness and represents the coat of skin spoken of. The officiator will represent Elohim at the altar. A couple will now come to the altar. Brethren and sisters, this couple represent all of you as if at the altar. You must consider yourselves as if you were respectively Adam and Eve. We will put each sister under covenant to obey the law of the Lord and to hearken to the counsel of her husband as her husband hearkens unto the counsel of the Father. Sisters, each of you bring your right arm to the square. You and each of you solemnly covenant and promise before God, angels, and these witnesses at this altar that you will each observe and keep the law of the Lord and hearken to the counsel of your husband as he hearkens to the counsel of the Father. Each of you bow your head and say yes. yes. That will do. Brethren, each of you bring your right arm to the square. Each of you solemnly covenant and promise before God, angels, and these witnesses at this altar that you will obey the law of God and keep his commandments. Each of you bow your head and say yes. 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 That will do. <clears throat> Brethren and sisters, we will now put you under covenant to obey and keep the law of sacrifice as contained in the Holy Scriptures. This law of sacrifice was given to Adam in the Garden of Eden, who, when he was driven out of the garden, built an altar on which he offered sacrifices. And after many days, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him, saying, 
Why dost thou offer sacrifices unto the Lord? Adam said, I know not, save the Lord commanded me. And then the angel spake, saying, This is a similitude of the sacrifice of the only begotten of the Father, who is full of grace and truth. Wherefore thou shalt do all that thou doest in the name of the Son, and thou shalt repent and call upon God in the name of the Son forevermore. The posterity of Adam down to Moses, and from Moses to Jesus Christ, offered up the first fruits of the field and the firstlings of the flock, which continued until the death of Jesus Christ, which ended sacrifice by the shedding of blood. And as Jesus Christ has laid down his life for the redemption of mankind, so we should covenant to sacrifice all that we possess, even our own lives if necessary, in sustaining and defending the kingdom of God. Each of you bring your right arm to the square. You and each of you solemnly covenant and promise before God, angels, and these witnesses at this altar, that you will observe and keep the law of sacrifice as contained in the Holy Scriptures, as it has been explained to you. Each of you bow your head and say yes. Yes. That will do. We will now give unto you the first token of the Aaronic Priesthood, with its accompanying name and sign. Before doing this, we desire to impress upon your minds the sacred character of the first token of the Aaronic Priesthood, with its accompanying name and sign, as well as that of all other tokens of the Holy Priesthood, with their names and signs, which you will receive in the temple this day. They are most sacred, and are guarded by solemn covenants and obligations made in the presence of God, angels, and these witnesses. To hold them sacred, and under no condition will you ever divulge them except at a certain place in the temple that will be shown you. The first token of the Aaronic Priesthood is given by clasping the right hands and placing the joint of the thumb directly over the first knuckle of the hand in this manner. Adam, we give unto you the first token of the Aaronic Priesthood. We desire all to receive it. All arise. Jehovah. See that Adam and Eve are driven out of this beautiful garden into the lone and dreary world, where they may learn from their own experience to distinguish good from evil. It shall be done, Elohim. We go now with Adam and Eve into the lone and dreary world. Sisters, this represents the telestial kingdom, or the world in which we now live. Adam, on finding himself in the lone and dreary world, built an altar and offered prayer, and these are the words he uttered. O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. I hear you. What is it you want? Who are you? I am the god of this world. You, the god of this world? Yes. What do you want? I am looking for messengers. Oh. You want someone to preach to you? You want religion, do you? 
There will be many willing to preach to you the philosophies of men mingled with scripture. But I am looking for messengers from my father. generally, see if Satan is there, and learn whether Adam has been true to the token and sign given to him in the Garden of Eden. Have them then return and bring me word. It shall be done, Elohim. Peter, James, and John, go down and visit the man Adam in the telestial world without disclosing your identity. Observe conditions there, and learn whether Adam has been true to the token and sign given to him in the Garden of Eden. Then return and bring us word. It shall be done, Jehovah. Come, James and John, let us go down. Observing the teaching of these people. What is being taught? The philosophies of men, mingled with scripture. How is this teaching received? Very well. Except this man does not seem to believe what is being taught. Good morning. What do you think of this teaching? I am looking for messengers from my father to teach me. That is good. Have you any tokens or signs? Have you any money? We have sufficient for our needs. You can buy anything in this world with money. Do you sell your tokens or signs for money? You have them, I presume. I have them, but I do not sell them for money. I hold them sacred. I am looking for the further light and knowledge Father promised to send me. That is right. We commend you for your integrity. Good day. We shall probably visit you again. the great day of my power. I reign from the rivers to the ends of the earth. There is none who dares to molest or make afraid. command us. We found Satan there, striving to lead the posterity of Adam astray. But Adam has been true and faithful to the token and sign given him in the Garden of Eden, and he is waiting for the further light and knowledge you promised to send him. This is our report. It is well, Peter, James, and John. James and John have been down to the man Adam in the telestial world. They found Satan there, striving to lead the posterity of Adam astray with all manner of false doctrine. But Adam has been true and faithful to the token and sign given him in the Garden of Eden. And he is waiting for the further light and knowledge you promised to send him. This is their report. It is well. Jehovah. Instruct Peter, James, and John to go down in their true character as apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ to Adam and Eve and their posterity in the telestial world. 
and to cast Satan out of their midst. Instruct them to give unto Adam and Eve in their posterity the law of the gospel as contained in the Holy Scriptures. Also give unto them a charge to avoid all light-mindedness, loud laughter, evil speaking of the Lord's anointed, the taking of the name of God in vain, and every other unholy and impure practice, and cause these to be received by covenant. Instruct Peter, James, and John further to clothe Adam and Eve and their posterity in the robes of the holy priesthood, with the robe on the left shoulder, and to give unto them the second token of the Aaronic priesthood, with its accompanying name and sign. Then have them return and bring me word. It shall be done, Elohim. Peter, James, and John, go down in your true character as apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ to Adam and Eve and their posterity in the celestial world. Cast Satan out of their midst. Give unto them the law of the gospel as contained in the Holy Scriptures. Also a charge to avoid all light-mindedness, loud laughter, evil speaking of the Lord's anointed, the taking of the name of God in vain, and every other unholy and impure practice. Cause them to receive these by covenant. Clothe them in the robes of the holy priesthood, with the robe on the left shoulder, and give unto them the second token of the Aaronic priesthood, with its accompanying name and sign. Then return and bring us word. It shall be done, Jehovah. Come, James and John, let us go down. To do now? We will dismiss you without further argument. Ah, you have looked over my kingdom and my greatness and glory. Now you want to take possession of the whole of it. I have a word to say concerning these people. If they do not walk up to every covenant they make at these altars in this temple this day, they will be in my power. Satan, we command you to depart. By what authority? In the name of Jesus Christ, our Master. true messengers from the Father, and have come to give you the further light and knowledge he promised to send you. How shall I know that you are true messengers? By our giving unto you the token and sign you received in the Garden of Eden. What is that? The first token of the Aaronic Priesthood. Has it a name? It has. Will you give it to me? I cannot, for it is a new name, and I have made a covenant not to disclose it. But this is the sign. Now I know that you are true messengers sent down from Father. These are true messengers. I exhort you to give strict heed to their counsel and teachings, and they will lead you in the way of life and salvation. The officiator will represent Peter at the altar. A couple will now come to the altar. Brethren and sisters, 
This couple at the altar represent all of you as if at the altar, and you will be under the same obligations as they will be. We are required to give unto you the law of the gospel as contained in the Holy Scriptures, to give unto you also a charge to avoid all like-mindedness, loud laughter, evil speaking of the Lord's anointed, the taking of the name of God in vain, and every other unholy and impure practice, and to cause you to receive these by covenant. Each of you bring your right arm to the square. Each of you covenant and promise before God, angels, and these witnesses that you will observe and keep the law of the gospel and this charge as it has been explained to you. Each of you bow your head and say yes. Yes. That will do. We are instructed to clothe you in the robes of the holy priesthood. Place the robe on your left shoulder. Place the cap on your head with the bow over the right ear. Replace the apron. Tie the girdle with the bow on the right side. Remove the slippers from your feet and put them on again as part of the temple clothing. You may now proceed to clothe. A couple will now come to the altar. With the robe on the left shoulder, you are prepared to officiate in the ordinances of the Aaronic Priesthood. We will now give unto you the second token of the Aaronic Priesthood with its accompanying name and sign. This token is given by clasping the right hands and placing the joint of the thumb between the first and second knuckles of the hand in this manner. We desire all to receive it. All arise. If any of you have not received this token, please raise your hand. The name of this token is your own first given name if you are going through the temple for your own endowment. Or if you are going through for the dead, it is the first given name of the person for whom you are officiating. The sign is made by bringing the right hand in front of you with the hand in cupping shape, the right arm forming a square and the left arm being raised to the square. This is the sign. I will now explain the covenant and obligation which are associated with this token, its name and sign, which you will be required to take upon yourselves. If I were receiving my own endowment today, and if my first given name were David, I would repeat in my mind these words after making the sign. I, David, solemnly covenant before God, angels, and these witnesses that I will never reveal the second token of the Aaronic Priesthood with its accompanying name and sign. Each of you make the sign of the second token of the Aaronic Priesthood by bringing the right hand in front of you with the hand in cupping shape, the right arm forming a square, and the left arm being raised to the square. This is the sign. Now repeat in your mind after me the words of the covenant. I think of the first given name, solemnly covenant before God, angels, and these witnesses that I will never reveal the second token of the Aaronic priesthood with its accompanying name and sign. That will do. We will return and report. Jehovah, we have been down to Adam and Eve their posterity in the telestial world, and have cast Satan out of their midst. We have given unto them the law of the gospel, as contained in the holy scriptures, also a charge to avoid all like-mindedness, loud laughter, evil speaking of the Lord's anointed, 
the taking of the name of God in vain, and every other unholy and impure practice, and have caused them to receive these by covenant. We have also clothed them in the robes of the holy priesthood, and have given unto them the second token of the Aaronic priesthood, with its accompanying name and sign. This is our report. It is well, Peter, James, and John. Elohim, Peter, James, and John have been down to Adam and Eve and their posterity in the celestial world, have cast Satan out of their midst, and have done all else that they were commanded to do. It is well. Jehovah, send down Peter, James, and John again to the celestial world. Have Adam and Eve and their posterity change their robes to the right shoulder, preparatory to officiating in the ordinances of the Melchizedek priesthood, and introduce them into the terrestrial world. Instruct Peter, James, and John further to give unto them the law of chastity, and put them under covenant to obey this law, which is that the daughters of Eve and the sons of Adam shall have no sexual relations except with their husbands or wives to whom they are legally and lawfully wedded. <coughs> give unto them the first token of the Melchizedek priesthood or sign of the nail with its accompanying name and sign. Have them return and bring me word. It shall be done, Elohim. Peter, James, and John, go down again to the celestial world. Instruct Adam and Eve and their posterity to change their robes to the right shoulder, preparatory to officiating in the ordinances of the Melchizedek priesthood, and introduce them into the terrestrial world. Give unto them the law of chastity, and put them under covenant to obey this law, which is that the daughters of Eve and the sons of Adam shall have no sexual relations except with their husbands or wives, to whom they are legally and lawfully wedded. Give unto them the first token of the Melchizedek priesthood, or sign of the nail, with its accompanying name and sign, and return and bring us word. It shall be done, Jehovah. Come, James and John, let us go down. We are instructed to have you remove the robe and change it to the right shoulder, preparatory to officiating in the ordinances of the Melchizedek priesthood, and to introduce you into the terrestrial world. You may now remove the robe and make the change. come to the altar. We are instructed to give unto you the law of chastity, which is that each of you shall have no sexual relations except with your husband or wife, to whom you are legally and lawfully wedded. Each of you bring your right arm to the square. You and each of you covenant and promise before God, angels, and these witnesses that you will observe and keep the law of chastity as it has been explained to you. Each of you bow your head and say yes. Yes. That will do. We will now give unto you the first token of the Melchizedek priesthood or sign of the nail with its accompanying name and sign. This token is received by bringing the right hand into this position, the hand vertical, the fingers close together, and the thumb extended, and the person giving the token placing the tip of the forefinger of his right hand in the center of the palm, and the thumb opposite on the back of the hand of the one receiving it, in this manner. We desire all to receive it. All arise. If any of you have not received this token, you will please raise your hand. This token has a name and a sign. You will be under the same sacred obligation in connection with this token and sign as you are with the other tokens and signs of the Holy Priesthood which you have received in the temple this day. The name of this token will not be given to you at this stage of the endowment but it will be given later on. The sign is made by raising both hands high above the head, and while lowering the hands, repeating aloud the words, 
O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. Repeat it three times. When Adam was driven out of the garden of Eden, he built an altar and offered prayer, and these are the words that he uttered. O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. Repeat it three times. Each of you make the sign of the second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarchal grip or sure sign of the nail, by raising both hands high above the head, and while lowering the hands, repeating three times the words, O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. Sisters, with the robe on the right shoulder, you are prepared to be taught the true order of prayer and to be introduced at the veil. A few of you, including couples, will please come forward and form a circle around the altar. The witnesses will please come forward and stand at the head of the altar. The sisters are to the left of the brethren. Only the best of feelings should be should exist in the circle. If any of you have unkind feelings toward any member of this circle, you are invited to withdraw so that the spirit of the Lord may be unrestrained. In the circle, we make the signs of all the tokens of the Holy Priesthood. We will begin by making the sign of the first token of the Aaronic Priesthood. This is done by bringing the right arm to the square, the palm of the hand to the front, the fingers close together, and the thumb extended. This is the sign. The name of this token is the new name received in the temple today. We will now make the sign of the second token of the Aaronic Priesthood. This is done by bringing the right hand in front of you with the hand in cupping shape, the right arm forming a square, and the left arm being raised to the square. This is the sign. The name of this token is your first given name if you are going through the temple for your own endowment, or if you are going through for the dead. It is the first given name of the person for whom you are officiating. We will now make the sign of the first token of the Melchizedek priesthood or sign of the nail. This is done by bringing the left hand in front of you with the hand in cupping shape, a left arm forming a square. The right hand is also brought forward, the palm down, the fingers close together, with the thumb extended. This is the sign. The name of this token is the Son, meaning the Son of God. We will now make the sign of the second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarchal grip or sure sign of the nail. This is done by raising both hands high above the head and while lowering the hand, repeating three times the words, O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. Oh God, of my mouth. We have here a list of names of persons who are sick or otherwise afflicted, who, have request, who are requested to remember in our prayer, we would ask the faith of all here to remember these persons. The sisters in the room will please veil their faces. Each brother in the circle take the sister of his left by the right hand in the patriarchal group. Each of you bring your left arm to the square and rest it upon the shoulder or arm of the person to your left. Those in the circle will repeat the words of the prayer. Our eternal Father in heaven. Our eternal Father in heaven. We, a few of thy children. We, a few of thy children. Approach thee in prayer. Approach thee in prayer. Clothed in the robes of the holy priesthood. Clothed in the robes of the holy priesthood. In the order of prayer. In the order of prayer. We express our gratitude. We express our gratitude. For thy beloved Son. For thy beloved Son. For coming to earth. For coming to earth. To teach us the gospel. To teach us the gospel. By precept and deed. By precept and deed. May we strive with all strength. May we strive with all strength. To emulate our Savior. To emulate our Savior. We give thanks for the restoration of the gospel. 
we give thanks for the restoration of the gospel through the prophet Joseph Smith. Through the prophet Joseph Smith. And for the succeeding prophets, and even unto our day. And to the succeeding prophets, even unto our day. We pray thou a bless President Monson. We pray thou a bless President Monson. That he may have thy spirit guide and direct him. That he may have thy spirit guide and direct him. That he may have help and strength. That he may have help and strength. Now we're grateful for the youth. We're grateful for the youth. We pray that they would be strengthened. We pray that they would be strengthened. That their testimonies would enable them to withstand. That their testimonies will enable them to withstand. The sins of this day. The sins of this day. Now again, thanking thee for the privilege we have of being here. Now again, thanking thee for the privilege we have of being here. We pray for those who have come to us this day. We pray for those who come to us this day. Troubled or concerned. Troubled or concerned. Would thou hear their prayers. Will thou hear their prayers. And give them assurance thou art there. And give them assurance thou art there. Thanking thee we do all this. Thanking thee we do all this. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We will now uncover the veil. Brethren and sisters, this is the veil of the temple. I will now explain the marks on the veil. These four marks are the marks of the holy priesthood, and corresponding marks are found in your individual garment. On the right is the mark of the square. It is placed in the garment over the right breast, suggesting to the mind exactness and honor in keeping the covenants entered into this day. On the left is the mark of the compass. It is placed in the garment over the left breast, suggesting to the mind an undeviating course leading to eternal life, a constant reminder that desires, appetites, and passions are to be kept within the bounds the Lord has set, and that all truth may be circumscribed into one great whole. This is the navel mark. It is placed in the garment over the navel, suggesting to the mind the need of constant nourishment to body and spirit. This is the knee mark. It is placed in the right leg of the garment, so as to be over the kneecap, suggesting that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is the Christ. These other three marks are for convenience in working at the veil. Through this one, the person representing the Lord puts forth his right hand to test our knowledge of the tokens of the holy priesthood. Through the one on the right, he asks us certain questions. Through the one on the left, we give our answers. As all of you will have to pass through the veil, we will show you how this is to be done. The person is brought to this point, and the worker gives three distinct taps with the mallet. Whereupon the Lord parts the veil and asks, What is wanted? Adam, having been true and faithful in all things, desires further light and knowledge by conversing with the Lord through the veil. Present him at the veil, and his request shall be granted. The person is then brought to this point, whereupon the Lord puts forth his right hand, gives the first token of the Aaronic priesthood, and asks, What is that? The first token of the Aaronic priesthood. Has it a name? It has. Will you give it to me? I will through the veil. The person then gives through the veil the name of this token, which is the new name received in the temple today. The Lord then gives the second token of the Aaronic priesthood and asks, What is that? The second token of the Aaronic priesthood. Has it a name? It has. Will you give it to me? I will through the veil. The person then gives the name of this token, which is his first given name if he is going through the temple for his own endowment, or if he is going through for the dead, 
It is the first given name of the person for whom he is officiating. The Lord then gives the first token of the Melchizedek priesthood, or sign of the nail, and asks, What is that? The first token of the Melchizedek priesthood, or sign of the nail. Has it a name? It has. Will you give it to me? I will through the veil. The person then gives the name of this token, which is the Son, meaning the Son of God. The Lord then gives the second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarchal grip or sure sign of the nail, and asks, What is that? The second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarchal grip or sure sign of the nail. Has it a name? It has. Will you give it to me? I cannot. I have not yet received it. For this purpose I have come to converse with the Lord through the veil. You shall receive it through the veil. It is received as left arms are placed upon right shoulders through the veil. The Lord then gives the name of this token and asks, What is that? The second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarchal grip or sure sign of the nail. Has it a name? It has. Will you give it to me? I will through the veil. The person then repeats back to the Lord the name of this token as he received it. Whereupon the Lord says, That is correct. The person is again brought to this point, and the worker gives three distinct taps with the mallet. The Lord parts the veil and asks, What is wanted? Adam, having conversed with the Lord through the veil, desires now to enter his presence. The Lord puts forth his right hand, takes the person by the right hand, and says, Let him enter. He is admitted into the presence of the Lord. We will now report. Jehovah, we have been down to Adam and Eve and their posterity in the terrestrial world, and have given unto them the law of consecration, and have caused them to receive it by covenant. We have given unto them the second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarchal grip or sure sign of the nail with its accompanying sign and have taught them the order of prayer. They are now ready to converse with the Lord through the veil. This is our report. It is well, Peter, James, and John. Elohim, Peter, James, and John have been down to Adam and Eve and their posterity in the terrestrial world and have done all that they were commanded to do. It is well. Jehovah, Instruct Peter, James, and John to introduce Adam and Eve and their posterity at the veil, where we will give unto them the name of the second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarchal grip or sure sign of the nail, preparatory to their entering into our presence. It shall be done, Elohim. Peter, James, and John, you will introduce Adam and Eve and their posterity at the veil where we will give unto them the name of the second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarchal grip or sure sign of the nail, preparatory to their entering into our presence. It shall be done, Jehovah. Come, James and John, we will introduce them at the veil. Brethren and sisters, we are instructed to introduce you at the veil, where you will receive the name of the second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarchal grip or sure sign of the nail, preparatory to your entering into the presence of the Lord. Second token of the Aaronic priesthood. It has. I will through the veil. Heinrich. 
What is that? The first token of the Melchizedek priesthood, or sign of the nail. Has it a name? It has. I will through the veil. The sun. What is that? The second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarchal grip, or sure sign of the nail. Has it a name? It has. I cannot. I have not yet received it. For this purpose, I have come to converse the Lord through the veil. You shall receive it through the veil. This is the name of the token. <coughs> Help in the navel, marrow in the bones, strength in the loins, and in the sinew. All the things will be upon me and upon my posterity through all generations of time and throughout all eternity. What is that? Second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarchal grip, or sure sign of the nail. Has it a name? It has. Will you give it to the Lord? I will through the veil. Health in the navel, marrow in the bones, strength in the loins, and in the sinews. Power in the priesthood be upon me and upon my posterity through all generations of time and throughout all eternity. That is correct. with the Lord through the veil, desires now and in his presence. 